So according to Soviet KGB defector Yuri Bezmenov, this is a video on YouTube that went uh, pretty viral uh, around 2020, Western culture has been under the subject of communist propaganda and disinformation, and what he calls active measures since at least the 1950s. And we're gonna talk about what that actually looks like, but in an interview in 1983, uh, that you can find online, he states that the ideological subversion, just think about that word, ideological subversion, that means I'm going to subvert your ideas. I'm going to I'm going to brainwash you. It's just, a, it's just a fancy way of saying brainwashing. The ideological subversion or psychological warfare has changed the perception of every American to such an extent that despite the abundance of information, right, no one's able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their communities, and their country. It's a great brainwashing process, which goes very slow. And if you just back up for a moment and you think about that, you know, the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite the abundance of information, and that's what drives me nuts about certain people. Like, I guess because there's so much fake news, but it's like, you know, like the whole thing with the pandemic. I'm like, bro, the, the, I don't even know where to begin, but like there's, how do you believe this stuff? There's too much information. If you just open your eyes, but... It's propaganda, ideological subversion, psychological warfare. I know some of the smartest people, like kids I grew up with that were like high IQ kids, they fall for this shit. They're the ones that fall for it the most. It seems the smarter you are, the deeper you're under this psychological warfare and, and ideological subversion. I'm a C student and I could see right through this stuff. Maybe that's what the C means, you could see. But the A students, they couldn't see a damn thing, right? They could and they cannot defend themselves. He talks about making sense of conclusions in the interest of defending yourselves men can't defend themselves against women right <laughs> it's, and then just think about defending their families there's a guy that, that uh, I met at the 21 convention that I spoke at a couple of years ago his you know his wife ran off with one of his kids and is cutting his son's dick off and giving him home warrants and I think this, the courts couldn't even help him right think about the brainwashing that that whole thing is all about right? It's a great brainwashing process. He says it goes very slowly. So you can just only imagine this started from the 1950s, almost hundred years ago. <laughs> Where are we at now? So the foundation for this plan to demoralize Western civilization or culture can be found in the work of two Marxist theorists. You got George Lucas in the bottom of Hungary. And you got Antonio Gramsci, of Italy. These men are credited with being the fathers of w the Western version of Marxism, right? You know, I'm not going to go all into the Bolshevik revolution and what that was all about, but this stuff started unfolding in Russia first, Eastern Europe. And uh, they recognized that they couldn't unfold it westward because in the West, there was no class warfare because there was a growing middle class. And so anyway, they both target, they both taught that communism was impossible in the West until both Western civilization and Christianity was destroyed. Now, why do you think that they would link Christianity with Western civilization? Most people don't realize that all of the fruits, all the amazing fruits of Western civilization are born out of Christendom. And so they understood, right? And if Christianity didn't have the power that it had to, to, to make righteous men's lives, then why would these men think that they need to attack it. So he said they needed to take down both Western civilization, civilizational structures, which is called patriarchy, and its root, which is Christianity, or the Christendom, or Christendom. So according to George Lucas, the guy at the top, the great obstacle to the creation of a Marxist regime was Western civilization itself. As he's quoted for saying, I see the revolution and destruction of society as the only solution, a worldwide overturning of values cannot take place without annihilation of the old values and the creation of new ones. Today, we call these people progressives. They call that progress. Uh, that was George Lucas, the guy on the bottom. Antonio Gramsci, the other creator of cultural Marxism, argued that the West would have to be de-Christianized by means of what he entitled the long march to the institutions and what he meant by this was that the culture was the new battleground and that all barriers to the acceptance of marxism must be removed or reconfigured 
according to Marxist principles. All barriers to acceptance of Marxism should be reconfigured, starting with the family, by perverting gender roles, and by removing the rule of the father, going through the churches, the government, military, Hollywood, sports, entertainment, schools, universities, seminaries, books, advertising, magazines, science, newspapers, and so on. So George Lukacs, he played an instrumental role in the founding of the Frankfurt School in Germany. The school was founded in 1923 with a primary goal of translating Marxism from economic terms to cultural terms. Then for some reason, only you can guess, he was forced to flee from Germany around that time. And so the school reestablished itself in New York City, at which point they shifted their focus from destroying traditional Western civilization or culture in Germany to destroying it in the United States, where they kept their focus on the cultural revolution. In institutions of so-called higher education, cultural Marxism was more commonly known as multiculturalism or more loosely known as political correctness. Some of the explicitly stated aims of their programs were to empty the churches, declare women to be an oppressed class and men as oppressors. So this was a part of ideological subversion. It's not true. Uh, they wanted to abolish the difference in education of boys and girls. They wanted to teach sex and homosexuality to children. Look at where we're at. They wanted to create dependency on the state and the state benefits. They wanted to control and dumb down the media. They wanted to promote excessive drinking and encourage the breakdown of the family. Now, given the focus of this podcast is the degradation or the degeneration of masculinity, we'll take special note of their plan to encourage the breakdown of the family since fatherless boys are extremely affected by the degenerate culture. And there's no doubt that the breakdown of the family and fatherlessness contributes greatly to the weakening of men for over the past 60 years or so. Illegitimacy, divorce, single mothers, and male incarceration rates have skyrocketed, as I've shown you earlier, over the first 60 years of the cultural slash sexual revolution.